Um, speaking of community, I um, wonder if you, um, how do you feel about uh, like the community you're in, do you find that there's a community that you would relate to? Because you mentioned that it doesn't like, just like in music, it doesn't have to be just for the Asian market. So I wonder um, how does community mean to you? And if there's a community that you strongly uh, work with or identify with? I would say within the R&B and soul um, community, the people that like listening or singing R&B and so when people resonate with me musically, I feel that it speaks to me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm, I've always been open to a lot of things. So, um, you know, we're all on this learning curve together and just evolving as um, people to like, you know, get closer to unity every day. And it's really, really important, like this days and age that at the end, we're all one race where we're all humans. And if we have good things to offer to one another, that's, um, that's the key point. But at the same time, we all have to also bear in mind with the fact that within um, within the entertainment industry, there's been a lot of infiltrations and some of whom they don't want, um, you know, they're trying to disproportionalize um, the representations and just really like, you know, just really deterring people away from the real talents. Mm -hmm. If you guys know what I mean, Mm -hmm. So connected with that, are there um, musicians in Thailand that you work with regularly now? Or do you feel like you have to teach them the style, uh, the R&B style? Do you have, you know, regular musicians that you can, you can play with easily? Mm. This is actually one of the hardest questions for me to answer, but I'll try my best and give my best shot with this. Like I said, I felt like there's a lot to dim down in terms of just like really cultural difference. Mm -hmm. um, moving back here in terms of like my style, my like demeanor and how I um, portray myself in the society. It's just like, it's more on a like, you know, more demure note when back in New York or back in the US, it's more of a, you know, you can be more outspoken. At the same time, I respect every culture, but at the same time, I think it's also important to like get the points across. It can be frustrating. It can be, it can feel stifled, but at yeah. the same time, I'm just going to say that I'm got, I've always vowed to myself that I'm going to do my best to get those messages across no matter what happens. And, you know, the yes or no comes after training along the way in terms of, um, you know, certain circumstances that I'm not able to be myself. But I know that at the same time, I must not lose hope and just really standing my ground with, you know, it doesn't matter what people think that, okay, I don't want to represent that guy. I don't want that guy to like, you know, shine um, more than me. But if they don't like what they're seeing more of. I'm not going to stop doing my thing either if it does get the message across because that's important. Thank you.
the truth is one of the most valuable things out there, then, you know, you can't change any bit of it. The truths are the truths. I just got to keep echoing the unspoken issues. And that's my key in terms of like the messages I want to get across while doing what I love and, you know, while I'm enjoying making the music, but just bring up the consciousness to another level in terms of being aware of a lot of things that are going on that people not, might not want to talk about it. And I think it's, um, I guess I would say it's one of my jobs to um, bring those to light. Okay. Thank you. So are, do you think that um, you see yourself uh, moving somewhere else in the, in the near, far future? I'd love to be back in the U.S., but as of now, um, with a lot of things going on, I'm doing my best with what I can with my musical projects and just really marketing myself, just really continuing to hone in with my craft because it doesn't stop there. A lot of things doesn't stop here. I'm open to a lot of possibilities. A lot of things are out in the air right now, but I'm going to keep my mind open so that I don't go back to eating rice over Maggie and ketchup. Okay. Um, speaking of like future direction and plans, like, do you think, or have you found um, the pandemic um, like done anything positive or negative to you? Because you are entering the market during a very unique time. It has been one of the most interesting experiences in my life. The fact that it's in the middle of those craziness, but at the same time, it has also brought the calmness to me and knowing that when you're put with your own problem and when everything's shut down, you're forced to sit with your problems. And that's when I think that when I recorded the song Cry, YRC, last year, it employed a lot of like personal struggle, but now that, you know, during the pandemic, it resonates with me even more and hopefully with a lot of people even more too, because with the, um, besides the pandemic, there's a, you know, just a lot of instability in terms of like, you know, just, it's, if you know what I mean, it's locked down, but th there was a lockdown, but then there were like many movements that arose from that. And it's not like peaceful, peaceful. It's more, of, there's a lot of um, bottled up issues that when that happened, then we realized that, um, you know, time is the most valuable asset that we all have. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I learned to just really um, staying present because you never know when um, things are gonna take another direction. So did the pandemic change uh, any of the plans you planned for your uh, debut? Absolutely, we had a workaround, but um, you know, there's been a lot of uncertainties, like let's say pre-pandemic, there are gigging opportunities available, but with the pandemic bringing everything to a complete shutdown state for a while. And then now that we're beginning to recover, we're still in that um, 
stage of uncertainty, but from the peak of the lockdown, what I've learned is that not uncertainty is certainty. So, so um, yeah. So can you tell us what's going to happen on the 16th? What's going to happen on the 16th? So, <laughs> we're releasing the song and the full song can be available on every platform. Okay. And I'm really hoping that um, people would go listen to that and if, you know, to really reveal the message, I'm just really hoping that people would take time to go back and reverse and get the message out of that. It's, um, it's one of those important statements that I put in the song and I want people to hear that. So would there be some sort of um, live performance or interview or something that, that uh, coincides with, uh, I, I don't know what a launch party does during, the, <laughs> during a pandemic. <laughs> Mm. as for that like with the launch party or the interviews yeah what, what's going to happen at the launch party yeah it's still up in the air okay. at the moment in terms of like um besides those um stuffs going public on each platform and promotional posts but we're pretty much open to a lot of ideas, maybe we should organize, um, I don't know, on the other day, this actually came to my mind that we should do like um, a cry party, like YRC party, <laughs> invite everybody um, that has the ID and the password to come in and probably like, you know, for a one, one to three hour slot and then open to the public, people can come in and leave like whenever they want, but the goal is to have people come in and cry. Because I think that, um, I think a lot needed. of people, people need to let it out. <laughs> I think a lot of people wants, want, want to cry right now, so. <laughs> yeah. They might not be able to wait until then, but I mean, who knows? Okay. What do you guys think? A cry party, YRC party. That's good. We have. We might have to do Zoom cry. <laughs> Zoom cry <Yeah. laughs> party. Yeah. And we could, you know, hmm, damn, if Zoom collapsed with spotify that would actually be amazing that okay like we'll just um set up the tear jerker playlist um probably like 20 songs on repeat for like three hours and people could come in and then if they can't feel like if they can't cry without the music and then let those music jerk their tears like bring their tears out and we all can cry together yeah. So are there any questions that we haven't asked that you want to talk about? Mm, I think I have a feeling that like we all pretty much like cover a lot on um, our release and I'm just gonna leave with the last message that um, we want y'all to really hear the song out and really take the time to reverse it because like Tony said at the beginning, it's like an analogy that we have to rewind back to what we have, we have missed out because a lot of times, even like on my personal end nowadays, there are people that they communicate, they reply, but just for the sake of replying. 
but not really comprehending. And I think that that's like, you know, that's important for like people to go back, rewind and review on what they just listened to and to really comprehend on that. So I think that's like um, one of the few messages that I want to get get it out to people. And I think that um, it's needed, especially in 2020. And I really hope that people would enjoy the music and find solace in that. Great. Uh, Rinchat, do you have anything? Mm, I guess uh, a good uh, last question would be, uh, do you have any future plans beyond this project? So we're planning on just to really keep on making music for as long as we can. Um, Cry is coming, YRC is coming out on 16th and we're planning on releasing other songs on a regular basis and to keep people in the loop and since it's the first song people might not you know get the whole idea of like what i really am and i think that's true with a lot of artists out there that are you know on their beginning steps but i'm not going to give up on that and just really slowly revealing myself and tell my story in a timely manner. There are times you wouldn't want to give yourself up too soon, but it's more of, there's a lot of like careful plannings that go into it. But all I can say is that months after months, if um, there will come a time that each single as we progress, as I progress, people get more pieces of me of, um, you know, who and what I really am. So my future plan is to keeping this moment, is to keep this momentum going and let the music speak for itself and slowly revealing, um, you know, other sides of me through my music and tackle on different subjects that people don't want to talk about and hopefully we'll be able to spread the message for the better. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony or Landon, do you have any particular uh, closing thoughts? I uh, just want to thank uh, thank you guys for having us and interviewing. Uh, sorry, my cat's all getting in the way. No worries. We always like, yeah. we always like cat videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, really want to thank you guys for taking this opportunity to, you know, have uh, Patra, Landon, and I um, be able to express um, our projects and, you know, hopefully... Uh, you know, it's 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 hard with a release, and then we never know what's going to happen. But you know, we're just praying for the best, and uh, hopefully, everything will turn out okay. <laughs> yeah, it's what we all hope for. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll send you guys the MP3. Maybe I'll reverse it for you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Thanks. I uh, hope you guys enjoy your day. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. You too.